the silver prices uh, now or down here. Silver right now, I looked at a while ago and it's around 32, it will take a little bit. $32 per ounce. Okay? And as a result of that, you're hearing these ads all the time to either sell them your silver or let them sell you silver. So the transfer of wealth that all of us have heard so much about, well, the silver and gold thing is a reverse. So what I run into all the time is that the Christian people are selling their stuff for an average of 50% of what it's worth. Goes over, goes through the system, comes back over here to the guys that are selling it, and they're selling it for more than it's worth. So the transfer is going the wrong way. Does that make sense? So, so what I've been trying to do for a long time is to tell people, don't sell your stuff. Very simple. Don't sell your stuff. They're not giving you a fraction of what's worth. First of all, if you're going to sell it, then get what it's worth. Does that make sense? How do you do that, Ron? Well, do? just like if you were going to sell a car, mm -hmm. first of all, you got to figure out what it's worth. Mm -hmm. right, if you're going to sell that, all right, let's go to the next slide. Okay, the rush is on. So, what is real or genuine silver? You got to determine whether it's real or not, or genuine or not. So, for years, have you seen these movies and the TV where the burglars go in and they put all the silver in the big bag? And, well, I always wondered who went through it and told them what they had or what did they have, or, you know. So, part of that might be pretty much worthless, so it can be quite valuable. So, so this, is, this is really common, simple, very, very simple information. But the question was, is how common is it, okay? I have gone in, and I'm not talking about 30 years ago. This bowl I bought three months ago, this bowl I bought maybe two and a half months ago. Uh, this buckle I bought week before last. Uh, this one I bought three weeks ago. This stuff, you know, I mean, this stuff is pretty, pretty steadily, and I don't go a lot. I don't go a lot. I'm lazy. I've ever, I used to, when Amber was little, I went out every Saturday morning. I felt like I had to find every bargain that moved in San Angelo. But I don't do that anymore. If I did, I'd find a lot more than this. This one, I bought at an antique mall. This one, I bought from an antique dealer. This one, I bought at an auction. There were all kinds of people there. Common kind of that, that most people, that, that really, I mean, you can move on. It's common knowledge. But there's a lot of confusion and misunderstanding. Because I was just telling Karen something. Swimming is simple knowledge. But if you don't know it, or somebody hasn't taught you to swim, that lack of that common knowledge can be pretty important, right? Or, or driving or any of those kind of things. So, so basically, we need to just kind of erase this confusion as well. So, so what, I, what I'm telling you and what I would tell old, old you to tell your friends is if they have any silver or gold items, first of all, don't sell them. Just hold on. Just don't sell them. I had a lady come to me, a fellow antique dealer, a few months ago in San Angelo, really long time dealer, well to do, lace, and she uh, said, Hey, Ronnie, are you, are you buying silver? And I said, Well, yeah, I am. You know. I'm not pursuing it like with ads and whatnot, but the word kind of in my circles is around that I buy silver. And she said, well, I'm thinking after all these years, I'm going to sell my silver. I said, well, you got a lot of stuff. And she said, yeah, my mom and blah, blah, blah. She's an elderly lady now. And so here's what I told her, because she's a friend of mine. I said, if you are sure you want to sell it, I'll buy it. And I'll give you a fair price. Her name is Joanne. Antiques by Joanne. Same. And I said, but my advice to you is, 
Don't sell it. She said, I said, do you really need the money at this point? She said, well, not really. She said, I just knew Sylvia was coming. And I said, well, here's my opinion. And then you do what you want. I said, it could be in the next few months or years, it could be the only thing that you want that's worth it. <coughs> that really is worth it. So I'm not saying it is, but it could be. And I said, if I were you and you didn't need the money, just hold on. So I said, now, with that said, if you decide that you want to sell it, I'm going to be a competitive buyer. I'm going to have to pay for a price. Yeah. So I saw her a few weeks later and she said, you know, I got to thank you. Thank you. She said, I'm just going to So I haven't seen her. I saw her once since then. We haven't, we haven't mentioned it. But the point is, that's the, that's the tipping point. That's the decision thing. And what I mean is that back when we're talking about collapse and crisis and whatnot, <laughs> if our economy really collapses, then this stuff may be all that I have that's worth anything. That's why I'm not really too in too hot a pursuit to sell it. I sell some of it. I sell quite a bit of it. But I sell it only if something is worth several times the silver value. Does that make sense to you? See, like if, and I have, you know, I haven't explored this buckle. I haven't researched it to see if it's got any value. I, and we're going to that in a little bit later uh, any value above the silver value in it. But if the things we've talked about earlier happen, this this silver and your gold in your wedding mass, you have no idea what the gold is worth. Gold is worth fifty times the silver. So people have no idea oftentimes how much a ring or a bracelet or a necklace in gold is worth. I mean, that even, even as much as I've dealt with it, sometimes it kind of catches my breath that how valuable it is at $1,650 plus dollars per ounce. $1,650. This is $30. Gold is $1,650 an ounce. So hopefully, some of y'all have some red bands or something on that we can light here when we get to the gold section. But we're we're really talking about worldwide value. And I was talking with one of the, our lead, someone in our leadership the other day, and I've been trying to convince him about what we're talking about, that this stuff, the value of it and whatnot. And so finally I told him, I said, I said, see this, see this little gold chain? I said, I got two reasons I wear that. One is that our oldest daughter, Angie, gave that to me. Years and years ago, she decided I needed to go China. I don't wear jewelry, I wear a silver belt buckle, and no wedding bands. Well, she decided I needed to go China. So I, I bought it, I wore it a little while, and I put it in the drawer. But the, here a few months ago, Aunt Amber will remember, I stayed around a family go China. And something just came over me, of this sentimental thing. And I said, you know, I'm going to put that on, and I don't think I'm going to take it off. Plus, I have to, you know. And uh, it'll always remind me of Angie. And so I started wearing it. And so it came in real handy that day of talking to this brother, the old old Norse man. And I've been talking about this stuff for literally. And I said, I said, do you see this time? I said, there's a second reason that I wear that. If I were to get stranded anywhere in the world, this man's a worker. I said, if I was in Mexico City, if I was in Hong Kong, I was in Israel, anywhere in the world, I said, I could sell this chain. Even if I couldn't speak their language, there's someone in those cities that would buy this culture. I said, therefore, this may be the most valuable thing to me sometime in my life. I mean, God. It could get me out of a place or a jail when I didn't have any money or was stranded if somebody had this problem in my chain. Does that make sense to you? That somebody, guy in China, he can weigh, he can weigh my gold chain. So, and I can say, well, it's worth a lot more than that, but I need to get a taxi to get out of here. Or, you know, I need some yen or whatever. And I may, and finally, I lost time to boom the line. I could just say the line, you know, because he's a world traveler. 
and that related to it. And so that kind of thing is what I'm trying to get over to the Christian community, is that these deals, these silver and gold items, since the beginning of time, <coughs> not just last week, not just last year, not just next year, since the beginning of time itself, for whatever reason, these items have been back. The guy that betrayed our Lord Jesus, they paid him off. When Abraham bought Sarah's burial, they paid for it. Paid for and when we get into the gold, it's even more interesting. The real historic thing about gold. I hope I don't forget to tell you about that. You probably don't know, but it's interesting. So, all right, we're going to overcome the confusion. We're going to get everybody to at least seriously think about it before they sell their silver stuff. Okay, one more, one more story in, in the silver. Year. Had, had a young man that needed to sell some silver coins. I said, okay, you're, you're in the spiritual world, spiritual family. I don't want to buy. I'll help you sell. I have a kind of a standard I try to keep. That way they don't come back and say, well, Ronnie, you know what I mean? It's just not good business to deal with family, either Christian or, or relatives. It's just better to kind of keep your slate clean if you can, in my opinion. Anyway, he said, we need to sell them. I said, okay, what can I do? So how do I do it? So I coached him through that. I coached him by phone. Gave him a couple of phone numbers, a couple of, you know, these people that advertise. He had $2,500, give or take, in value of silver coins, cash value. He was offered anywhere from $1,000 to about uh, finally get think he got like 2300 But he got offered 1000 1200 15 Call it in. Do you get my message? Okay. He says, why, why are they doing that to me? He says, simple. They're trying to make a dollar. They're trying to make a count off of you. You know, what What do they have to lose by offering you $1,000 for your $2,500 worth of stuff? If you take it, they just make $1,500. They have nothing to lose to do that. Just like if you're selling a, a car or a gun or a, or a house. That's why you get a house appraised. You don't just go out there and say, oh, I think this thing, I haven't checked in the last 20 years, but I would guess it's worth about it. So, you know, everything just works the same in the world of commerce. But for some reason, people don't think about it in this kind of stuff. So you have to evaluate. You have to know what your, what your items are worth. And you have to figure out what it is to do that. 